How are we doing, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of uh, FSI's PGA DFS Pick Show. Well said NASCAR there. Um, big, big, big Talladega weekend last weekend. And, um, you know, my, my mind wasn't on the Zurich, so forgive me. But here we are. We're back for some PGA DFS. Uh, the Mexico Open at Vedanta, uh, a new course, new venue. Um, you know, everyone's fighting for themselves. Nobody's on any teams, so... Uh, the DFS, you know, I should increase the bankroll back up to where we normally play, and uh, I'm ready to get back to it. It was a nice little break, but um, what about you, Jay Cool? Um, how how we doing, and uh, what are we looking at this week? Yeah, so uh, the Zerk was interesting. I watched as much of the coverage as I could on Saturday, and then when those guys pulled away, can't lay Shoffley, although it was significantly closer on Sunday. I kind of lost interest a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I was excited to see our boys out with Taurus make a nice push there on Sunday. That was cool. Um, my line, I only played one line on DraftKings. Uh, absolutely thought I was dead by just getting five out of six through, but ended up uh, with second place in Burns, who was in our core, uh, Burns and Horschel, and then also picked up another top five uh, out of the event. So I actually did just fine, played super light, but uh just the one line, oftentimes that's all it takes to just have a little fun and uh, make a sure. little money too. Uh, but yeah, I'm much more excited to push on to this week. I will play slightly less than the normal on my bankroll just because it's a new course. We have no course history. We're kind of sort of guessing on some of the uh, course traits, um, but we've got a lot of information. I've dug in pretty hard to try and figure out what we're looking at. But again, yeah. we don't have any PGA Tour players history on this course. So it's really kind of tough to gauge on that. So um uh, I'm trying to evaluate a bunch of comp courses and then also uh, looking at recent form quite a bit too. So uh, kind of based on that. Uh, but if you want, I'll jump right into a, a course preview if that works. Yeah, yeah, fire away. So yeah, we are playing in Vallarta, Mexico. The course is Vindanta Vallarta. This is again, a like brand that. new course. Oh, you like that? <laughs> <laughs> a brand new course for the PGA Tour. Uh, as you said earlier, we will be at this course for uh, this season plus two more seasons is what the current contract is. So that's exciting that it's not gonna just be a one and done on this course, but get to play it a couple times. Uh, we might be better off next year after we've got some stats to back up the course. Um, looking at everything we can find, these are super wide open fairways. Guys are just going to absolutely blast it off the tee. Um, it is not very penal rough. There is not a lot of OB around the fairway areas. There's a decent amount of water that comes into play on a handful of holes, but it's mostly kind of around the greens. So we're much more concerned about being pinpoint accurate on the approach shots. So I'm taking into consideration a lot more shots gained approach this week, toning down my shots gained off the tee, but I'm including that drive distance. Golfers are certainly going to get an edge. The course is 7,400 yards and a par 71. So this is very, very long for PGA Tour standards, especially at a par 71. Typically, this port course plays as a par 73. They made some changes for the PGA Tour. They made uh, it apparently a little more difficult, but I truly see the guys just tearing this course apart um, and probably the winner over 20 under par, something in that uh, general range is my guess this week. With uh, pass bomb greens, we don't see that very often on tour. So we're looking at a couple other courses that have it. Unfortunately, we don't get the best shots gained data from those courses. Um, looking at like Puerto Rico Open, Corrales, events like that are some of your comp courses. And then uh, Caves Valley kind of seems like it might be similar. And even um, the plantation course at Kapalua, again, just a bomber's course, get it as far out there and then play from there. So uh, those are a couple I'm looking at this week for comps. Birdie or better is going to be in my modeling quite a bit. Drive distance, uh, par five scoring, although it's a par 71, there are five par threes. So we're actually keeping all the par fives. We just lose a par four this week. Uh, so if you want to kick in par three scoring as well, that is just fine by me. And then sand saves, tons and tons of sand on this course. They're up and down the fairways. Uh, kind of, There's going to be a lot of balls in the sand is from what I'm guessing here. So not as much OB. Um, so I'm not as concerned about like a drive accuracy, but I want bombers. I want accurate on the irons uh, and then par five scorers and guys who make lots of birdies. That's my uh, model yeah. goal for this week. Yeah, you added in what I was going to add in about the sand. They had added over like 50 bunkers for the champion, you know, for a tournament style play. Um, so I think, you know, sand saves, I've waited into the model par threes as well. I, I, I like those little specialty stats. 
kind of separates maybe one or two guys in like a price range for me uh, to go along with ball striking, um, you know, approaches, ball striking off the tee. Um, and of course, the distance factor, I think, is a really good, intricate part of the statistical model this week. So I like all of what you said. With that being said, let's get into our favorite plays of the week. Uh, I'm really, really, really liking Chris Kirk this week at 9,600, 35-1. I love that number as well. I know it's not usually what I'm betting Chris Kirk at, but in this field, I feel pretty strong uh, on him this week. And I've seen a lot of people kind of back up my thoughts on that with uh, some tickets floating around the Twitter sphere. So, uh, hey, shout out Elon, uh, new Twitter CEO. Uh, yeah, anyway, a great tee to green for Chris Kirk. And uh, he's in some really good form. Now, he did miss the cut at the RBC Heritage, but that was all putting. Couldn't putt at the RBC, minus yeah. 4.6 strokes putting. Uh, so I'm not worried. That can kind of reverse course if it likes to. Uh, 35th at the Valero, missed the cut at the Players. Players was a really tough tournament to make that cut. But before all of that, a fifth at the API, where he gained 9.4 strokes key to green. As we know, API kind of similar to this course with the water setups and the seventh at the Honda, which is a tough Florida course with the same thing, um, you know, resort style uh, with the water in bunker play. I thought that was a really good, um, you know, maybe not comp, a true comp course, but I kind of looked at Florida and thought maybe there might be some correlation here with, you know, Mexico and Florida. There could be. Sure you know, some kind of similarities with the courses. He's second in the model T to green, third ball striking, seventh birdies are better. I thought that was perfect. And I thought 9,600 uh, is is the highest I'll ever pay for Chris Kirk probably, but I mean, yeah. so I'm going for Chris Kirk. Who? What is your thoughts on him and your favorite of the week? Yeah, I like Chris Kirk a lot. He pops in my model as well. Um, everything you said there makes a lot of sense. The 35 to 1, I think, is excellent in this yeah. field. It Basically, it's John Rahm versus everybody else in the betting yeah. world. Um, yeah. So uh, I would not absolutely not in the betting market touch John Rahm this week. That's just silly putting your money there. Bet on some of these other guys. Really, Gary Woodland is, uh, depending on what site, he is the second best odds at 20 to 1. So there's just a massive gap. We normally see a bunch of guys in the teens. There is none this week. It's Rahm versus the world. Um, but in DraftKings, I'd be interested in some John Rahm this week, although he's going to be very yeah. chalky is what we're looking at. But much more interested in dropping down here and playing playing Gary Woodland at the top of my lineups. The form is pretty decent. Five out of eight uh, his made five out of his eight cuts recently three of those though were top 10 finishes so he's missing cuts and also scoring top 10s i like that a lot that includes the api honda and valero those top 10 finishes he did ruin a whole bunch of lines at the masters and i think yeah, uh, i'm kind of hoping that that will uh, maybe help his ownership just a little bit uh, and people can kind of flock to some of the others in this high 9k range kirk or maybe an answer something like that not sure exactly where that'll end up but uh yeah, he, he gained on approach for five straight events leading into the Masters. So the Irons are playing very, very well. Um, no course history here for anybody this week, obviously. But I'm looking at the stats here. Seventh on approach, 11th in drive distance, kind of those two big ones I've been talking about here on the course fit. 13th tee to green, he makes a ton of birdies. And he is third ranked in this field for par five scoring. So I think there's a lot to like Gary Woodland. Uh, the long irons, too, are really, really yeah. good for him. So uh, I'm going to take the big man quite a bit this week. He is a front runner for my one-and-done choices as well. So uh, thoughts on Gary? Yeah, I like Gary Woodland. I think he's going to be a really strong play. Rates out first in my model. Uh, so probably going to have to just jump on board with that. Uh, anytime someone grades out that well in, uh, in the modeling, you just have to go with it, trust it. And uh, like you said, just excellent on those par fives. It's going to be huge uh, for Gary Woodland this weekend. All right, moving into some value plays. Um, I'm going to go with Mark Hubbard at 8K, 70 to 1. He's in really good form um, recently. And now when I did my modeling, I usually do the last 50 rounds, uh, but that's, you know, with some course history and, you know, some other things involved here, but without course history, I just went last 24 just to see who in the last like five or six events is playing the best. And uh, Mark Hubbard is actually one of them. Uh, 24th on the approach, 20th tee to green. 
Uh, 23rd from a distance of 175 to 200. Now, he isn't far off the tee, but that distance from 175 to 200 tells me he's pretty good with the long irons. He's going to be able to, you know, maybe use a couple of five irons and six irons, uh, hit these greens from that longer distance, and 12th in par three scoring. And we know we have the uh, five par threes, was it? It's four. Uh, yeah, five par threes, yes. Five yes. par threes, yeah. So par three scoring, major emphasis. Now, I did miss the cut at the Punta Cana. Um, and, you know, I, I think that's a calm course in a way, uh, but that's a really windy course, uh, extremely sure. windy. And we don't have much wind in the forecast. So I thought the calm course to per- Puerto Rico might be a little bit better. Uh, 38th there and a 15th at Honda. I like that little Florida uh, form. And at T14 at Zurich last week with his partner, Ryan Brem, who won the Puerto Rico. So... Uh, or was that Blom? No, it was it was Brem. Yeah, Brem, who won the Puerto Rico Open. So apparently these guys caught up down there in Puerto Rico and decided to play the Zurich together. And uh, I'm going to roll those guys both into uh, this week in Mexico. And next up is Chase Seifert. Um, I'm a big Chase Seifert guy. He's made us a couple of dollars in our day. 7100 is an extremely good price tag, I feel, for Chase Seifert, who finished T18 last week in the Zurich Classic. Uh, pretty good ball striker as well. 27th on the approach, 7th tee to green, 16th ball striking, and 38th birdies are better. That all in the last 24 rounds for Seifert with a 22nd at Corrales, 41st at the Puerto Rico, and 25th at the Honda. So a lot of similarities between both golfers here with the recent form on the comp course, comp-ish courses, and um uh, and really what grayed out well in the model. So uh, your thoughts on these two and your favorite values of the week. Yeah, you made a good point. We've played Chase Seifert on a, it's like a lot of the smaller events, or I should say yeah. the, the weaker field events, weaker your Puerto fields. Rico yep. t- type events. He tends to pop very well for us. Mark Hubbard is a guy that uh, he popped in my model a bit better than the pricing, a bit better than the outright market. And then I noticed on Yahoo, he is almost stole cold minimum price yeah. over there. I'm going to play a whole bunch of Mark Hubbard on Yahoo this week, but I'll also oh. be mixing him in here on DraftKings, but uh, yeah, I think he is maybe one of the top uh, two, three plays if you're playing on Yahoo this week. Don't miss out on the Hubbard pricing, but yeah, I like both these guys quite a bit. Uh, That Mark Hubbard form is kind of tough to ignore, especially the comp courses to go with it. So a couple guys for me on value play. Speaking of form, CT Pan has been playing some excellent golf lately. He's made five out of his last six cuts. Two of those were top 10 finishes at the Honda and the Genesis. He rates out really well on comp courses. Also uh, 23rd in my modeling for that and then uh, eighth overall for all stats included. So I'm going to be playing quite a bit of CT Pan here. I don't necessarily love him in cash, but it's really tough once you get into the 8K and below range to pick out anybody you would really love to play in cash. But that's just because of the strength of this field. We're going to have to take some guys that normally we wouldn't think of as cash plays. They absolutely are, in my opinion, this week. CT Pan is probably going to be one of those. Uh, he rates out really well in the stats here, 20th on approach fifth tee to green in this field and uh, ninth in sand saves, which we talked about earlier. Uh, yeah. Another guy I'll be taking quite a bit of Alex Smalley, probably a name you're not very familiar with. Here he is on the uh, slide with his tour card. <laughs> he is a grad here recently, 2021 Corn Ferry tour grad. Um, he has played uh, three, I'm sorry, he has three top 15 finishes since he joined the tour. And one thing uh, that that Corrales course, he has played over there extremely well. He's played that course three times, 14th, 22nd, and then he just finished runner-up here recently. Um, yeah, so well. I love that part of it. The form is just okay, four out of seven cuts, but this dude's playing in some really tough events of those seven events. So um, I'm not super concerned about that. Um, he is, again, a, a young golfer that is young, new on tour. Um he rates out well, though, 24th in distance, 4th greens in regulation, 13th in par 3 scoring, and then he rates out well in that long uh, proximity from 200 plus. And then I kind of also looked at just uh, not necessarily specific comp courses, but long courses. I looked at easy courses. We're thinking it's a birdie fest and even long plus easy at the same time. He rates out really, really good for all of those. So if he uh, if it turns out kind of playing the way we think it's going to I think Alex Molly could have a really good shot this week uh, to have a great finish. 7,400 is a great price tag. I would love like a top five or a top 10 on him in the betting market. Yeah, I think that's a really, really strong play. And that flash at the Corrales, maybe the 80 to one 
isn't a terrible number and maybe able to shop that maybe get a hundred to one or something like that out there. Yeah, uh, certainly going to be in the player pool. When I saw you mention him pre-show, I was like, Oh, for sure. I mean, we've been playing Alex Smalley all year um, as like a really low own six K play and only 7,400 in a field like this. I think that's a really, yeah. really easy you, click. You made a really good point. Uh, this is a week where you absolutely need to be shopping your lines. If you are playing yeah. on, if you're doing outright bets, they're all over the place. I'm seeing yeah. some guys ranked anywhere from 80 to 150 to one. If you're yep. betting him at 80 to one, I'm not saying Alex Smalley specifically, but you're making a big mistake. You're leaving tons of money out there. If you have it available in your state, check your different books because they are all over the place right now with this. My guess is it might be a little more evened out versus when they uh, started coming out on Monday. But really, there's a couple uh, guys. Uh, I'll talk about one next where the odds are just nuts all over the place. So um, be shopping. You need to this week. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's get into the sleepers of the week. I'm going to go with uh, a guy probably haven't even thought of to get him onto onto this slide ever uh this year but a guy that i did have in mind going forward into the future of um dfs and that's ben griffin a youngster on the corn ferry tour uh getting i believe a sponsor invite um you know with the really weak field 151 66 100 typically this guy is around 9500 on the corn ferry tour uh, he's got three top tens on the Corn Ferry Tour. He doesn't have the best finishes in the last two weeks, but uh, Ben Griffin, I've played him multiple times on the Corn Ferry Tour uh, DFS whenever we get like a small $5 Corn Ferry Tour P, uh, GPP every now and then, and Ben Griffin is usually in it. Um, I think he's a really good course fit, pretty good off the tee. I'd say average, but he's really good ball striker, uh, pretty good out of the sand as well. He was 16th in the field um, from sand saves, par threes, he's all right. And um, he was ninth at the Lake Charles, 12th in the Bahamas earlier this year, and uh, eighth birdies are better. And I noticed in 2019, Ben played uh, the Puerto Rico Open and finished 49th. So that had to be when he was really young. So uh, cool to see yeah. Ben Griffin up. And uh, I'm excited because I've been scouting a player like this, um, him and Callan uh, Ter- Ter- Talon. Uh, Tara, another guy down there yeah. in that 6K range. I'm going to be playing both of those guys, Corn Ferry guys. Uh, and uh, what are your thoughts on them and your favorite sleeper this week? Yeah, Kellum was one of my uh, sleepers this week as well. I will certainly be playing him. I'm kind of going into the total opposite end of the age spectrum when it comes to golfers <laughs> here with uh, my sleeper. Uh, but I just can't ignore what the model is telling me here on Von Taylor this week. He's 6,900 on DraftKings. Um, that's where I'm playing him, not the outright market. Um, but he's a guy I'm seeing at 150 to one on DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm seeing him as low as 80 to one on other books. Not that either of those are right, but uh, maybe somewhere in the middle doesn't fit this 6,900 price tag. Um, so I'm I'm very interested there. I think you get some value right off the bat. He's made five out of his last six cuts, so the form is good for me. He finished 25th at the Corrales and seventh at the Puerto Rico Open. Both of those events were just back in March, so the two top 25 finishes. Um, I'm super happy about that on the comp courses. And then his last 50, he rates out pretty darn well in some of these focus categories. 28th on approach. 37th birdies are better 16th on opportunities gained and 24th on par five scoring where you're going to see him uh, fall very very short is on the uh, driving distance uh, don't look at that stat if you're looking at von taylor this week if you can ignore that um, but what i'm looking at uh, to get beyond that though he rates out really well on long courses and easy scoring courses but on these long courses for whatever reason he is gaining a bunch of strokes on the field i don't know if that's just a combination of his approach or a long approach um, but the putter has been very well i think that's what's helping him along the way uh, making up for his distance with a hot putter if he can continue that this week i think he kind of uh, makes up for that handicap a bit and uh, potentially a very good finish he, he's top 10 in my overall model right now at 6900 so I will be certainly jamming him in. Yeah, certainly nothing wrong with a guy with a lot of experience. Um, Vaughn Taylor, I, I mean, been around the block. So I could see I could see him playing out fairly well this week. 6900 is a really cheap price tag as well. Not much to lose there. All right, uh, finishing it off with the one and done slide. 
thanks to our friends at Fantasy National Golf Club. Um, well, John, I'm not sure where what we're going to do for you this year uh, as far as the season standings, but, you know, you're in the majors. You know, you have, you have a really good start there. So um, best of luck to you in the majors. I'll try to take it home here for the season standings, but you never know. Uh, Gary Woodland picks up a win, might be back. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm certainly going to avoid taking whoever you do, so I don't spoil that for uh, you. Um, but yeah, just just some bad luck. I mean, uh, uh, last time out, I had Webb Simpson played just fine for two days, and then played uh, pretty garbage for the last two days, and and that ends up with uh, I think we looked at sixteen hundred dollars was his take that week, yeah. barely enough to probably pay his caddy and his hotel. Um, right. So uh, that is fine. I will just keep moving on. I will uh, I'll make up for it by uh, winning some cash in the majors season one and done. Uh, but yeah, give me Gary Woodland for the season long, and uh, we'll see if I can inch uh, the right direction this week. Yeah, we definitely went with our favorites. Um, when we found our guys, we circled them pretty hard this week uh, in our research earlier in the week. And I'm going to go Chris Kirk, uh, my favorite as well. Uh, 539th, I dropped a little bit, not too much after the Russell Henley uh, flubbed 18, um, missed five footer for par to make the cut. Uh, that one's going to sting a little, but man, I didn't see him doing much on the weekend anyway. So wasn't much of a difference with the RBC heritage, uh, not much of a prize pool anyway, Sure. which, which we were talking a little bit about the show uh, before the show about the Saudi league and, and how 25 million is a prize pool uh, for these golfers. And, you know, the RBC was what, like seven and a half or something like that. Just PGA has to respond. They have to respond to this, this Saudi league. Because I don't want to see, I don't want to see these players leave this leave this tour, leave our leave our shores, if they do decide to play in in Saudi Arabia. I mean, I know most of them are in like you know New Jersey and London and in you know places like that. But I want to keep the integrity of the PGA Tour intact. So hopefully they respond with you know better prize pools for these for these players and for these youngsters as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, all right. So uh, anything else to add on the Mexico Open before we go? No, I think uh, I think the course is looking pristine from what I've seen in some yeah, of the photos nice. with uh, boots, boots on the ground here. I'm excited uh, to see a new course and uh, and see kind of how it plays out. And uh, yeah, should be a, a fun week. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, that'll be it for us. You can follow us on Twitter at TKNation47. That is John Cool 19 You can follow our Twitter handle at FSI underscore DFS. In that bio, we have a link to our Discord chat for all for the updated sheet from John, which was really good this morning. Uh, and any updates on wind, um, core lineups come out tomorrow. Uh, plenty of live chat. So if you guys are interested, uh, you can find that link there and subscribe. So thank you much. Uh, like this video, comment below, and everyone enjoy the Mexico Open. Sweet. Good luck.